Welcome back to Yusof Reacts. Today, we're diving into the strange and mysterious world of Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, a film directed by Tim Burton that brings Ransom Riggs' beloved novel to life. But does it capture the magic and mystery of the book? Let's find out. The story follows Jake, a seemingly ordinary teenager who embarks on an extraordinary journey after the mysterious death of his grandfather. His search for answers leads him to a remote island in Wales, where he discovers the ruins of Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children. But this isn't just any ordinary orphanage, this is a place where children with extraordinary abilities, or peculiars, are kept safe from the outside world. With the help of Miss Peregrine, Jake discovers that he might be more peculiar than he ever imagined. The film introduces us to a cast of fascinating characters, each with their own unique abilities. There's Emma, who can control air and must wear lead shoes to keep from floating away. Olive, who can create fire with her hands. And Enoch, who can bring inanimate objects to life. And then there's Miss Peregrine, played by the enigmatic Ava Green, who can manipulate time and is the guardian of the peculiar children. With Tim Burton at the helm, it's no surprise that the film is visually stunning. The dark, gothic aesthetic combined with the whimsical elements of the peculiar children creates a world that is both eerie and enchanting. Burton's use of practical effects and CGI blends seamlessly to bring the peculiar's abilities to life in a way that feels both real and magical. For fans of the book, there are bound to be comparisons. While the film stays true to the spirit of the novel, there are some significant changes. The order of events is altered, and some characters are combined or omitted. Perhaps the most controversial change is the switch of abilities between Emma and Olive, which left some fans puzzled. However, the film manages to capture the essence of the story and its themes of identity, belonging, and the power of being different. Asa Butterfield delivers a solid performance as Jake, portraying the character's journey from confusion to acceptance with subtlety and depth. But it's Ava Green who steals the show as Miss Peregrine. Her portrayal is both commanding and mysterious, perfectly embodying the protective yet enigmatic nature of her character. The supporting cast of peculiar children also bring their characters to life, making the world of the film feel rich and vibrant. When Jacob Asa Butterfield discovers clues to a mystery that stretches across time, he finds Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children. But the danger deepens after he gets to know the residents and learns about their special powers. When Jacob Asa Butterfield discovers clues to a mystery that spans different worlds and times, he finds a magical place known as Miss Peregrine's home for peculiar children. But the mystery and danger deepen as he gets to know the residents and learns about their special powers and their powerful enemies. Ultimately, Jacob discovers that only his own special peculiarity can save his new friends. Florida teen Jake Portman Asa Butterfield feels he lives a mundane life. One day at work, he gets a phone call regarding his grandfather Abe Terran's stamp. Jake calls Abe himself, and the old man sounds frightened and paranoid. Jake's supervisor Shelley Olin Jones gives him a ride to Abe's house. As they make it to Abe's house, Jake and Shelley see a man with white eyes Samuel L. Jackson standing in the road menacingly. Jake enters Abe's house to find it ransacked. Outside in the woods, Jake finds Abe's flashlight with blood on it. Abe is lying on the ground with his eyes missing. He is conscious long enough to warn Jake of something awful. Abe dies, and a monstrous creature starts walking toward Jake. Shelly emerges with her gun, and Jake alerts her to the creature behind her. She starts shooting, but she sees nothing. Later on, Jake visits his psychologist doctor, Golan Allison Janney to talk about how he's felt since his grandfather's passing. He knows it was no accident, despite the coroner stating that Abe had a heart attack. We see a flashback of Jake as a child with Abe telling him fantastical stories about encountering monsters and other oddities. He would tell Jake about a group home for children run by Miss Peregrine Ava Green, a mysterious English woman who, along with the other children there, have strange abilities that she kept living with her. Jake's aunt gives him a book from Abe from Ralph Waldo Emerson, 
which contains a postcard from Miss Peregrine welcoming him to return. Her home is on an island called Cairnholm, located in Wales. With encouragement from Dr. Golan, Jake convinces his parents to allow him to go there and visit Miss Peregrine. Jake travels with his father Franklin Chris O'Dowd, who didn't have the best relationship with Abe, his father. On the ferry to the island, the two spot a peregrine falcon flying up above. Jake jokes that it must be Miss Peregrine herself, so he calls to her. Upon arriving at the island, Jake and Franklin stay at an old pub that also has a room. Franklin then pays two local boys to guide Jake to the side of the island that he wants to see. When Jake gets there, he finds that the home has been destroyed. He returns to the pub disappointed, believing Miss Peregrine and the children to be long dead. The next day, Jake goes back around to the home and finds a group of children there. He gets spooked and runs away, where he ends up tripping and knocking himself unconscious. He wakes up to find himself being carried by a little girl named Bronwyn Pixie Davies, who possesses incredible strength. Jake then meets the children that Abe told him about Emma Ella Pernell. A girl who can manipulate air and must wear lead shoes to keep her from floating away. All of Lauren McCrosty, a girl with pyrokinetic abolites. Hugh Milo Parker, a boy who has bees living inside him. Millard Cameron King, an invisible boy. And two masked twins Joseph and Thomas Odwell. The children guide Jake through a cave, but he gets spooked and runs away. Jake returns to the pub and finds it filled with customers. The manager doesn't let him up and threatens him when the others suspect Jake of being a spy. The peculiar children arrive and intervene to get Jake out of there. He quickly realized he is stuck in the 1943 loop for now. Jake is then brought to meet Miss Peregrine herself. She introduces him to the remaining children Fiona Georgia Pemberton, a girl who controlled plants. Claire Raffaella Chapman, a girl with a mouth in the back of her head. Horace Hayden Keeler Stone, a boy with prophetic dreams. And Enoch Finley McMillan, who has the power to bring back the dead for a brief time. He shows off this talent using two small skeletal puppets with tiny hearts that fight each other for a short moment. Enoch is jealous because he likes Emma and knows Jake does too, but Emma had feelings for Abe and he left long ago. Miss Peregrine explains to Jake that they live in a time loop, which keeps them from the outside world but allows them to live in peace. They are stuck on September 3, 1943, during the Wii Raids, moments before a bomb would drop on the house and kill everyone. But Miss Peregrine sets the clock back to 24 hours earlier. They cannot live outside the loop, or else their years will catch up to them and they will die. Jake joins Miss Peregrine and the children for dinner. Afterwards, they are treated to Horace's dreams that they watch like movies. They see a woman Judy Dench being wheeled away by villainous men. As well as Jake and Emma looking like they're about to kiss making it super awkward in the room. After the show, Miss Peregrine brings the children outside and shows Jake how the loop works when German planes fly overhead and drop a bomb, but she resets the clock to 24 hours earlier, taking them back to September 2nd. Jake follows Emma into a cave asking questions about everything he's just heard and seen. But Emma says there are some questions she can't answer. A bird then FLIs into the cave and hits the wall. Emma brings it back to the home to be treated. When Jake returns to meet his dad, they are called over by a farmer whose sheep have all been killed. They return to the pub and Jake finds a letter that Abe wrote to Miss Peregrine warning her about someone named Mr. Baron, and to tell Miss Avocet another headmistress of a home for peculiars, to create a new loop immediately. The next morning, Jake and Franklin hit the beach and meet an ornithologist Rupert Everett. Looking out for rare birds for a book he plans on writing. Jake later sneaks out while Franklin takes a nap so he can return to the home. Miss Peregrine is treating the bird, who is really Miss Avocet, the same woman seen in Horace's dream. And an imbrine just like Miss Peregrine meaning they can take the form of birds. Jake questions Miss Peregrine about Baron, but she avoids giving answers. Jake then runs into Enoch and Olive. Enoch brings Jake over to the room of Victor Lewis Davison, Bronwyn's brother who was killed by the same creature as Abe. 
His eyes are missing, and Enoch reanimates him like a puppet to freak Jake out. Emma takes Jake to her secret hideout, which is a sunken ship deep beneath the ocean. She blows him an air bubble and then blows the water out of the ship. Emma shows Jake photos of pale-eyed people, including Baron, whom Jake recognizes as the man outside Abe's house the night he died. Afterwards, she brings Jake to watch Miss Peregrine walk with her crossbow over by a spot with a chalk outline of a creature. A tall, eyeless monster like the one Jake saw in the woods emerges, but it is only visible to him. Miss Peregrine shoots the creature with an arrow, and it falls perfectly into the outline. Emma realizes that Jake's peculiarity is being able to see these monsters. Back at the home, Emma brings Miss Peregrine her book to explain to Jake who these creatures are. Baron and his cronies are hollow guests or just hollows. A different group of peculiars that hunt the good ones in order to live beyond the loops for all eternity. Baron performed an experiment using Miss Evaset due to her inbrine powers. But it backfired and turned him and the other hollows into hideous monsters. They managed to return to their human forms by consuming the eyes of peculiars. Miss Peregrine walks into a room where the children are sitting by Miss Avocet, who has taken her human form. Fearing that Baron will come after the children, she decides it is time to leave and find a new home and loot. Jake returns by the beach and finds Franklin worried sick. A wheelchair-bound man that they had met earlier is found dead by the rocks with his eyes taken out. Jake runs away and is followed into the cave by the ornithologist. He then takes the form of Dr. Golan before revealing himself to be Baron. He turns his hand into a blade and holds it to Jake's throat in order to make him do his bidding. Baron forces Jake to take him to the home. Miss Peregrine finds them and tells the children to retreat for their safety. Knowing that Baron is waiting for his hollow friends to go after them. And with Jake being able to see them, he is their only hope for survival. She asks Jake to promise that he will look after the children should anything happen to her. He agrees, and she turns into her bird form so that Baron may cage her. Jake and Miss Evisette help keep the children hidden in darkness for when the hollow shows up. Jake then answers the phone to hear a call from Abe in 1943. Jake takes the time to say he wished he could have been a better grandson. As Miss Evisette is telling the children what to do, she is pulled through a wall by the hollow. Jake guides the children to safety and fights the hollow with Miss Peregrine's crossbow, but he misses every shot. Eventually, the German plane drops the bomb on the house, killing the hollow. The loop then closes for good, and the children can never return to that home. The children work together to raise Emma's ship to the surface so they may head over to the Blackpool Tower, where there is another loop. Since this loop was created in January 2016, Jake and Emma realize that if they kill Baron there, they may be able to prevent Abe's death from happening. They all arrive at the pier and go through a haunted house where the hollows are set to perform their experiment with Miss Peregrine and other imbrines. Jake and Emma lure some hollows outside toward the pier. Once the hollows reach the pier, the children fight back. They start throwing snowballs and cotton candy at the hollows to allow them to be seen. Enoch brings some skeletons to life, which go after the hollows and start slaying them. Bronwyn grabs a horse off the merry-go-round and hurls it at a hollow, throwing him into the water. The other children fight Baron and his two hollow friends in their lair. The male hollow tries to freeze Bronwyn under a pool of water. But Fiona stops him by throwing seeds at him that sprout vines that wrap around him. Olive frees Bronwyn, but the hollow starts to freeze Olive up. Enoch brings an elephant puppet to life and uses it to crush the hollow. The female hollow is turned to stone by the twins when they remove their masks and stare at her. Enoch apologizes to Olive for not appearing to care for her as much when it looks like she's dead, but she is revived and happy to hear what Enoch said. Jake and Emma attempt to fight Baron, but he is immune to their attacks. Jake frees the imbrines and pisses Baron off. Emma and Enoch find Jake, but Baron has also taken Jake's form to trick them. Jake is able to prove himself when he spots the last hollow walking behind them. He picks up Baron Jake as he tries to convince the hollow who he really is, 
but he plucks out Baron's eyes and kills him. Enoch throws Jake the crossbow, which he uses to kill the hollow. The children then leave on the ship to stay within their loop, but Jake knows it means he cannot see them again. Upon returning to Florida, Jake goes by Abe's house and sees that he's still alive. He tells Abe all about his time with Miss Peregrine and the children. Abe gives Jake the Emerson book, which contains a lot of money in it, for his travels. Jake is running on the docks to catch up to the children's ship. He finds Emma and explains to her that he's had to go through different loops in different cities. Over different years, but she stops him and kisses him. As he joins them on their adventure, Miss Peregrine FLIs by and stops at a tower. She finds the children and FLIs over to their ship. Asa Butterfield delivers a solid performance as Jake, portraying the character's journey from confusion to acceptance with subtlety and depth. But it's Ava Green who steals the show as Miss Peregrine. Her portrayal is both commanding and mysterious, perfectly embodying the protective yet enigmatic nature of her character. The supporting cast of peculiar children also bring their characters to life, making the world of the film feel rich and vibrant. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children is a visually captivating film that brings the peculiar world of Ransom Riggs to life. While it may not be a perfect adaptation, it succeeds in creating a unique and immersive experience that will appeal to fans of the book and newcomers alike. If you're a fan of Tim Burton's distinctive style or stories that celebrate the strange and unusual, this film is definitely worth a watch. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more movie reviews and analysis. Let me know in the comments what you thought of Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, and if you'd like to see more videos like this one. Until next time, stay peculiar.